All right, guys, it's Jesse, Iowa Audio Review. And I'm going to do the first portion of this video this way just because I want to kind of document the whole thing because inside this box is a VTV uh, amplifier. And online, there's been some less than satisfactory experience or something with them or some negative gossip going around, which is fine. I'm not judging anyone's experience, but I just want to document my experience. Um, so not only the, uh, you know, not only the negative stuff is being talked about, possibly maybe the good stuff. I, I just got it. I cut it open and I haven't taken it out or nothing. So my experience could be bad, could be good, but I just wanted to document it, get this first part of the video done because after you take it out, I'm going to hook it up and listen to it for a couple of weeks and decide if it's something I'm going to keep or not. So either way. <clears throat> I usually don't do like the unboxing portion anymore because obviously everything comes in boxes and if it isn't packaged well, it's just, just mention it. You don't really need to show it. Um, but either way, just to kind of fully document everything here. Um, does look like it's packed well. Here's your power cord uh, bagged and taped to a nice piece of foam to kind of keep it from flopping around in there. So this is the... Uh, the was it the NC two five two MP Hypex, and despite some of the negative comments and stuff about them, the price to performance is really high. So even if they aren't perfect, I think you know some mishaps are a little bit tolerable because you're still getting arguably a lot of performance for your money. So I don't I personally don't expect it to be perfect, you know. And location, connection, you get a little information uh, about it. And then power trigger option, front panel ID, warranty, and then you get an assembled and tested. And there's a signature and a date that was signed off by someone and not a 12 volt trigger model. I don't need the 12 volt trigger. I am not opposed to just turning it on and off or just leaving it on. Nice thick foam. Which is good to see because I just ordered a, uh, I just received a, a matching Fisher cassette deck that goes with a uh, late 70s, early 80s Fisher rack mount system I have. And I finally found a, uh, the matching cassette deck for it. Got in the mail the other day. And it was packaged quite well, but somebody dropped that thing on the corner and the whole front corner of it was smashed. And now it's no good. So it's good to see they got some nice, thick, dense foam that's really going to protect it. Inside bubble wrap. Oop. Looks pretty clean. No scratches on that side. Good. Looks good. Front. Uh, pretty clean. Just your VTV logo. The Encore uh, indicator, whatever logo. Because uh, these do come in. What is it? The Purify and Pascal modules as well. I figured I'd try the Hypex first. You know, if it's something I really like, maybe I'll try another one of them. And then you just have an LED indicator, and I believe it's a blue LED. And we'll go over this again once I've used it for a while. But I just want to go over the immediate state out of the box. Um, nice heavy binding posts, XLRs, and the power cord. Let's look at that power cord real quick. I got a power cord right here I'll be using in a review soon, so we'll just try this guy. Stick him in there. Seems to fit snug. The IEC plug or whatever you want to call it, AC plug is not, not loose or anything. Sticks on there quite well. Good snug fit. Um, so that seems good. Feel good. That seems good. We'll grab a pair of wires here real quick. Very snug. Nice. Nice and deep. I always complain on a lot of the budget speakers I review the 
Binding posts always look nice, but they're only about half as deep as they should be. Good quality binding plugs should uh, be able to accept the full length of the banana. <laughs> if this would uh, focus, there you go. Yep, yeah, these are pretty long BFA style banana plugs and even fully accepts them. Man, I don't know what happened. Setting must have changed, now it doesn't want to focus again. Either way, whatever. Moving forward here. And then we'll grab an XLR. Do, 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 do. Fits nicely, locks in nicely. That's a little hard to get to with the binding post there, but not a big deal. It's not something you're probably gonna be taking in and out constantly. Um, yeah. Nice. Nice, all nice and snug. So, and then on the bottom, there is a bunch of extra holes, um, but as others have stated, uh, and they probably use this chassis, chassis, whatever, uh, for multiple boards, amplifier boards. So that's not a problem with me. That just saves them money, which saves me money, hopefully. Uh, nice machined aluminum feet with rubber grommets. And then I'm assuming this is your position for your LED light because this is, you can't turn this off. So it must be off, normal, bright. I don't know. We'll get back to that when I do the full review. But I just wanted to do an out of the box review. You know, just, I hadn't looked at it. Maybe I'd get one that was all banged up and rough or get one that was nice. But I figured, hopefully if I got one that was really nice, hopefully my documented experience that I'm doing here will be a little bit more positive for VTV because I think what they are doing is, hopefully what more people will be doing down in the future as these high-end, oh, Class D modules um, become available for more people just to build kind of DIY amplifiers that you can get a lot of performance for not much money because the way I use amplifiers I don't need a fancy amplifier made out of precious metals and all these other things and features I have preamps and DACs I just need an amplifier and that's exactly what this is so I think that's gonna be it I'm gonna hook it up use it for a couple weeks beat the crap out of it do you know Put it through my uh, my everyday use that I would expect out of it, and we'll do the rest of you then. All right, stay tuned. All right, two months has gone by, and I've gotten to use this amplifier quite a bit, uh, mostly with some of my own DIY speakers. Well, actually, not mostly, but I'd say about 50/50 with my some of my DIY speakers and the JBL Stage A130s, and we'll just kind of go. Quick back over it, I know in the first part of this, I unboxed it and kind of went over some stuff. And uh, we'll just run over it again. It's the it's a generic, basically it's a generic aluminum Chinese chassis. Um, but it's solid. It's a good, or chassis, uh, whatever. It's it's good. It's solid. It's fine. And then uh, VTV has their own logo. Uh, and the Encore uh, <clears throat> machined into the front of this one. Um, so that's nice, and they do offer other amplifier modules. modules. <laughs> Very, uh, I don't want to say plain, uh, it's minimalistic, but yet, uh, you know, it looks very clean and nice. i totally cool with it, I guess. Uh, nice aluminum feet with uh, like a rubber O-ring in the bottom here, very solid. Um, yeah, nothing, not much aside, a little bit of venting on the top, we over the bottom, again, uh, all these extra holes or so they can use a single chassis chassis with uh, a handful of different modules um, So nothing new there. It's common practice in in industry and then on the back you have your uh, right and left binding posts very high quality um, CMC I believe these ones are Yeah, CMC USA. So I think these are gold plated copper very thick, very heavy duty. Zero complaints. Excellent uh, banana binding post. And then your XLR inputs. And then your power and your on off. I did not get the 12 volt trigger because uh, I didn't. The whole time I used this, I just left it on. These things use hardly any power and they don't get hot. Um, so when you're not using it, it doesn't really, it's not going to hurt anything to just leave it on all the time. Maybe if you're going on vacation, you're going to be gone for a while. Maybe shut it down. But otherwise, I just leave it on all the time. 
And when I first started using it, the SMSL M200, uh, I didn't have it yet, so uh, I was using these, which we'll get to in a second. Don't make fun of my tattoo. I've been hanging out with my daughter today. Do, do, do. Let's see. Yeah, when I first got it, this hadn't shown up. So I just uh, hooked it up off of my mini DSP, which doesn't have balanced. And so I have a set of these RCA, single-ended RCA, two balanced, whatever, XLR. It says here, since they don't put in the extra... Uh, you know, they don't offer one of these with RCAs on the back, and that's fine because they just make it cost more. Uh, it says right here, RCA, even though the MP series ETV amplifiers, the amplifier is fully balanced, the MP amplifier can accept a signal from an RCA connection using a suitable RCA to XLR adapter, and then some brand name, but you can use any of them, doesn't really matter. XLR male adapter cable. Oh, that's part of the other one. Uh, it says, note the gain will be slightly lower running an RCA connection. That's because typical standard RCA is 2 volt, where balanced is 4 volt. So having only 2 volts, um, it's not going to make as much power. And after I got this with those, mm, I, I couldn't tell you how much, how big of a difference it made. Um, I will say, though, it, it was noticeable. It does get louder on the XLR, or, or should I say, so I never turned it up to the max, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> almost 250 watts. I would say in the, in the volume range that I used going from these to these, I could tell there was more power on tap using a four volt XLR. But if you don't have that, it's not that big of a deal. You could always get one and just use these for a while. It still had plenty of power, even with these. Um, and then, you know, down the line or whatever, get your get your balanced stuff. I have other than that, I haven't had any issues. Nothing, nothing weird. Uh, no loose connectors on the back. I know the reason I bought this is because I've had a lot of, well, everything I've had up to this point in my life. Because there is no, uh, for some reason, companies don't offer objective data on their products. And now that places. Uh, like Audio Science Review and then even Audioholics with Gene before him, or getting some of this information out there, every amplifier, speaker, whatever I've always had, you know, in the past has always just been either purchased for one subjective reason or another. There's never been any objective data attached to any of it on how well it does or doesn't perform, or even if it performs to the manufacturer's specifications or marketing bullshit they usually put out. So I went digging for something. Um, these aren't specifically tested on some of these sites, but the amplifier module is in some of the other amplifiers that are tested on like Audio Science Review. Trying to find a, a price to performance balance, this was probably about perfect for me. I think total was about 550 or 560 shipped to me. The measurements this thing achieves are way up there with amplifiers costing thousands of dollars because a lot of those amplifiers use Hypex modules. What they have done is taken those high quality, high performing modules, stripped off all the stupid BS they try to charge you a bunch of extra money for you don't need, unless it's some specific option you need, but all the stupid fancy precious metals and dumb prestigious pretentious crap they pile around it. Get rid of all that junk. I mean, unless, you know, you gauge your life by how good your audio shit looks. Um, and just taking that awesome module and put it in a decent case and you're done. You're not paying for a bunch of extra crap. You're just paying for just the amplifier and then you can send it, use whatever you want to send it a signal. I use the SMSL M200 because it's 300 bucks. I'll do a review on it. But it's got a ton of connections. Uh, four volt balanced. It's solid. It's got volume. It's got a remote. It scores in some of the top performing DACs on ASR. That DAC outperforms uh, again. DACs costing thousands of dollars. No, you don't need that crap. This will do just as good or better, probably better. And you know, about five hundred fifty, or we'll say six hundred. Who cares? Plus three hundred, nine hundred bucks, under a thousand bucks. And this system is 
you know, well, well, at least a hundred plus an ad, you know, in the territory of some very expensive gear. It just doesn't look pretty, I guess, depending on who you are. Getting to the part where actually listening to it, I wanted I wanted to have something that objectively performs and measures well. These do. It's not questionable. Translate that into real world use. You can definitely tell an amplifier like this is very, I don't know how to put it, it's very clean and transparent, but yet powerful. It's just got loads of power, and this isn't even the most powerful one. It's 250 watts times 2 into 4 ohms, which is plenty of power for most people. You can get them in 500 or even 1,000, I think. And then there's even better ones in the, I think it's the Pascal Class D modules. And whether you like it or not, Class D is going to take over. Almost all the best performing amps out there now are Class D. But what I mostly noticed is you're getting... A, Super clean, neutral, transparent, with loads of clean power. I mean, it's what I expected. But uh, far as like listening to regular old music and stuff versus any other decent amplifier on like some run-of-the-mill speakers, it doesn't really sound a whole lot different. Using a little bit better speakers, better source, some actually some good. Uh, well-recorded music that doesn't necessarily mean DSD or 24-bit or anything. You know, a lot of times I look up albums or tracks that are known for being well-recorded and then use those. And in those situations, it's a little more apparent that clarity and, you know, transparency, it's just, it's a very neutral amp. It's, which is what you should want. It's gonna, it's uh, not gonna color the sound. Or at you know really add any audible distortion or anything. It's going to take the original signal and amplify it. Um, the DAC as well. The DAC actually, measurement wise, outperforms an amplifier because it's much easier to make a DAC that performs at that level than an amplifier. But so the DAC's not the DAC is transparent. The amplifier is the most transparent amplifier I've ever owned, and I wasn't expecting it to be like. This mind-blowing, oh my god, experience. Because um, it never is, really, with audio. Um, audio, it's usually lots of money for tiny improvements, pretty much, it seems like. Um, I've gotten bigger improvements out of just moving my speakers or adding acoustic treatment or something. But it is there, if, you, if you're one of those people that really sits and listens to, you know, really tries to hone in on the detail... And every little thing, this from what I can tell, it's there. Now, on the other side, I don't listen to any of that kind of music hardly ever. I listen to like Metallica and Mudvayne and all kinds of music, classic rock up through you know the 2000s. And I'd say 99% of all the mainstream music I listen to is not recorded well. It's full of compression, uh, improperly engineered and mastered, recorded, all that. It's just not a good source, even if it's on CD. Just because it's on CD doesn't mean it's 16-bit. They're usually, uh, CDs is just up to 16-bit. A lot of the music on CD after compression is only about 8 to 10 bits. So, for me, the swath of music I listen to on a daily basis doesn't seem to really benefit from an amplifier like this. It's, it doesn't make it sound worse. It sounds fine. It sounds great. But it doesn't seem to make it sound any better than playing it on almost any other amplifier I've had. But that's just me. If you're a person that likes to sit and analyze and, you know, listen to high-quality recordings and yada, 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 I think you would, uh, I don't think, you would like this amplifier. Now, if you want an amplifier that's going to make your music, I don't know, some, some weird subjective adjective like sexy and smooth and warm or whatever you want your, your brain tells you, um, you know, this isn't going to be for you. This is going to be a very neutral, very clean amplifier. Allergies are killing me. I'm running out of, I'm running out of voice here. So overall, what do I think? Is it worth what VTB is asking for it? 
Sure, I don't think it's overpriced. I think what they're doing is something hopefully continues to happen in the future where uh, I don't know if Class D amplification will continue to be so modular where the these Class D boards can be just picked and put into different uh, amplifiers and stuff. But like I said, the, the module in there, what they've done is taken a really great Class D amplifier module, whatever they call it, and just put it in a basic case and cut out all the extra BS. So people that don't want to spend a ton of money but yet get really good sound can. And that hopefully as we move into the future and if Class D standard or form factor or whatever you want to call it kind of continues on this route, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if other companies start doing it. I'm surprised that companies like Topping and SMSL, you know, that make these, you know, excellent, they make just excellent DACs, um, you know, you can get uh, one of these DACs for 100 or 150 bucks that will just outperform about any super expensive pretentious DAC. They start putting that kind of attention and effort into something like this. I wouldn't be surprised if in the future you start seeing stuff like this, say, topping an SMSL or Sabage or, I don't know, one of those Chinese, there's you know, a handful of those Chinese, com Chinese companies out there. It may not even have to be one of them. There could be other companies that pop up down the road. Uh, even a company like, I don't know, if like a company like Shit would do this, where they take a case that they already have or something and maybe integrate a few little options and put, you know, a Hypex or Pascal or whatever, a Class D, high-end Class D module in it. But stuff like this, Class D is going to, you know, as DAC's, DAC performance has gotten so much better in just the last few years, and the price is stayed really about the same. I mean, it's gone up a little bit on some of them, but you can still get a really good DAC for under 200 bucks or, or even at 100 bucks. If that sort of thing starts happening with Class D amps, where a lot of these little Class D amps, these companies, you know, start paying more attention to the specs and, you know, changing a few things here and there, and they're going to keep getting a little better and a little better and a little better. I wouldn't be surprised if things like this become more, or more of them available from different companies, you know. Uh, there are, are there already are a few other companies that do pretty much the exact same thing. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if more of them don't start showing up uh, if this sort of thing is popular. Because I think a lot of people that buy these, or the majority of people interested in you know, getting into high-end audio, don't really care if their amplifier is made of gold and rhodium and platinum and all these, you know, you know some pretentious chunk of metal that looks like it belongs in some old farts house. All they care about is that it's in a solid chassis and it performs well. And that's uh, exactly what these are. So, am I going to keep using it? Uh, probably not right now. I got another amplifier in I'm using. I just wanted to try something uh, objectively good instead of, you know, just continuing on in the subjective, the, uh, the fantastical room of subjectivity everybody lives in in the audio world, it seems like. So far, I can't say I've not liked anything that's measured well. Everything I've tried so far that measures well, I think it sounds great. <laughs> so, um, but I also like some stuff that doesn't measure well. So, long story short, if you're looking for an amplifier that performs really well for a low price, um, I wouldn't be worried about giving VTV a try. Uh, I know, again, some people have had some quarrels or issues with them. I completely stayed. I didn't. I completely stayed out of it. I just went to the website, picked out an amplifier I want, bought it. Within 24 hours, I got a confirmation email and a tracking number. A few days later, it was at my house. Everything went perfectly fine, perfectly smoothly. I have zero complaints with them, um, in my experience. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Whatever you want to say about it, whatever.